Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Christmas, finances were especially tight in Paul's household, but he was somehow able to scrounge up at least a few dollars to give to his wife so that she could go and, and buy at least a little bit of food for their Christmas dinner. But after his wife arrived at the store, she just couldn't resist herself, and so along with a little bit of food, she also bought some wrapping paper for the gifts, and, and that really made Paul angry that he would, she would use the money for that purpose. Paul also got angry when at, at the same time he was started yelling at his wife, their little three-year-old daughter went and grabbed that wrapping paper and used it to wrap a gift in only the messy way that a three-year-old can wrap a gift. And when Paul saw that, he really flew into a rage and and said some things to his little girl that probably fathers shouldn't say even when they're angry. Well, the next day was Christmas, in fact. And when the family gathered together and as they started to exchange their presents, this same little girl, she ran behind the Christmas tree and she found the gift that she had wrapped the night before. And she took that gift and she took it to Paul. She said, here, Daddy, this is for you. Well, feeling more than just a little embarrassed about how he had acted before, Paul opened the gift, only to discover that the box was empty. And so he flew into another rage, said, what are you thinking about to his little three-year-old girl? What are you thinking about? There's nothing in this box. Why would you give me an empty box as a Christmas present? Well, Daddy, that little girl said, with all the innocence and all the wisdom of someone older than three years old, well, Daddy, she said, the box is not empty. It's full of, of love and kisses for you. I blew kisses in there just for you, Daddy. And I put love in there, too. And it's all, it's all just for you. Well, after Paul was done hugging his little girl, and after he had repeatedly, repeatedly apologized to her for how he had acted, he took that little box and he put it by his bed where it remained for years and years and years to come. And whenever Paul was hurt by someone or whenever he was discouraged by something, he, he'd open that little box and he, he'd reach inside and he'd, he'd pull out an imaginary kiss and he'd place it on his cheek and he'd thank God. He'd thank God for the little girl that gave him that empty box because he, he had finally come to understand exactly what kind of gift he in fact had been given. <coughs> Well, well, what makes this Christmas special, and in fact, what makes every Christmas special, is that the, the very same angel and the very same multitude of the very same heavenly host who announced the first version of the, of the very first special Christmas gift, what makes this evening, Christmas Eve, special is that, that that same thing is now being played out here with us and for us. And we'll never receive in our entire lives, just as Paul discovered, We'll never receive a gift that's, that's more valuable or, or more important or more special than this particular gift. And of all the places where you and I could take this special gift and where all the places where we could put this special gift, the one place where God wants us to put this very special gift of His is in your heart and in mine. Because there's a very special purpose for this special gift of His. And because, more than anything else, He wants it to be close to us, this gift. He, in fact, wants it to be in our hearts where it can always be available for us. So God puts the gift in our hearts so that whenever something tragic happens to us, 
or to a member of our family or to a member or one of our friends, we can, we can reach into that gift and we can pull out whatever it is that we need just at that time. He puts the gift in our hearts, God does, so that whenever we feel lonely, we can reach into that gift and we can pull out whatever it is that we need. He puts the gift in our hearts so that whenever we get frustrated with anything, whether it's frustrated with work or angry with a friend or a loved one, He puts that gift in our hearts so that we can reach into the gift and we can pull out whatever it is we, that we need at that point in time. God puts the gift in our hearts so that, so that when, whenever we have nowhere else to turn and no, when we have nowhere else to go, whenever we need more strength than we ever thought we need, whenever we, we need more love than we could ever find anywhere else, whenever we need to give or to find a forgiveness that we can never find anywhere else, whenever we need to have a peace that truly is beyond any of our understandings, God puts this gift in our hearts so that just those times we can always find whatever it is that we need. And you know the gift that He puts in our hearts. It's the gift that we celebrate even this evening. It's His Son, Jesus the Christ Child. You and I, we don't need to be told that thousands of years ago, God walked down the heavenly stairway to bring His special gift to earth. But tonight... Maybe we need more than that. Tonight, maybe we want to believe, maybe in fact tonight we, we need to believe that, that what that gift has always promised, that what that gift has always promised is still true tonight for you and for me. Tonight, we need to believe that in Jesus, God has entered into our world in such a way that, that the earth can never be the same again. We need to believe that in Jesus, God has entered into our lives so that, so that our lives may never be the same again. We need to believe that in Jesus, God will enter into our struggles and into all of our dark places, into all of our uncertain futures in such a way that, that they will never be the same again. And so even though He does it lots of other times and lots of other days and in lots of other ways tonight, tonight, God runs behind the Christmas tree and He grabs His special gift and He unwraps it and He opens it and He gives it to us by by personally answering the prayer that an old gospel hymn always repeats and offers up for us all. You know the hymn. Come into my heart, it says. Come into my heart, Lord Jesus. Come in today, come in to stay. Come into my heart, Lord Jesus. And even though it really is true, even though it's always true, and even though the gift is, is always given on this Christmas Eve, God makes sure that, that it's somehow truer than ever for you and for me by coming into our hearts and lives in a special way, by, by renewing His commitment to not only come in but to stay in our hearts by giving birth to Jesus for us and by giving birth to Jesus in us. And so, so no matter who you are, no matter what you've experienced, there is good news tonight. No matter what's gone wrong in your lives, there's good news tonight. No matter how joyful and triumphant you may feel, or no matter how sad or defeated you may feel, there's good news tonight. No matter how confident or, or how worried you may be, there's good news tonight. Because the angel's announcement has always been true, and the angel's announcement is still true. So Jesus does still come to shine light upon our darkness. Jesus does still come to bring joy to our despair. Jesus does still come to offer hope to our greatest need. And that, tonight, of all nights, tonight, this Christmas Eve, in our hearts, in our lives, tonight, that is God's gift to you and to me. 